Hello Driving Intelligence community. This week I ended up with a check engine light and that was after I was having some really poor performance with this thing. I thought I was having transmission trouble. It wouldn't shift or downshift. Then I got poor performance. I felt like it was really sluggish. Check engine light came on. I was getting really worried about that transmission because it is old, 245,000 miles. Well, it turns out it's the throttle position sensor. Now that's the code I got, but I haven't confirmed if that is the actual problem. Well, in this video, I'm gonna confirm that, but I'm also gonna tap into what people call the zip tie method to improve throttle response. I'm gonna tie those two together in this video, so stay tuned. The throttle position sensor is a sensor that tells the ECU how far or how deep into the throttle you are with your foot. Now, can't necessarily see it real good right now because I don't have any lights, but I'm gonna use my next LED lights that you can get on Amazon through a link below. Fantastic light for underneath the hood. Anyway, here's my throttle position sensor on this uh, 10th Gen F-150, it's a 2002. And basically, when I pull the throttle or push the throttle in the, in the truck, it moves that sensor and it gives a direct indication back to the, to the ECU how far I'm pushing into the throttle. And that, that tells the ECU whether I want to accelerate fast, mildly, if I want to uh, speed up very aggressively from a steady state position, it will downshift. It gives information back to the, to the, uh, the transmission. So if this thing isn't operating properly, you get a lot of problems. You get poor engine performance, very poor fuel economy, bad shifting quality. Uh, so there's a whole litany of issues that, that uh, this one little sensor can create if it's not operating properly. Getting into the specifics of the operation of the throttle position sensor, I'm going to take out my 2002 wiring diagrams for the F-150. I'm going to open it up to the page that talks about various sensors and specifically the throttle position sensor. And uh, let's talk about how this integrates into the, uh, the ECU or the PCM. This page covers several different sensors. There are many that uh, go across several pages, but we're looking again specifically at the throttle position sensor. And we'll start off with a reference voltage. It comes out of the PCM, the powertrain control module, for multiple components, multiple sensors. That voltage reference is five volts. It goes up to the throttle position sensor and it's attached to ground. And when you're turning your, or you're pushing down on your, uh, your throttle, it adjusts a rheostat in here, which gives a signal back to the PCM where you are in the throttle. Now at idle, it usually is about one volt. And when you're at full throttle, it should get close to five volts coming back here. And again, the PCM uses that for uh, advance, for shift points, downshifting, upshifting, etc. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test the voltage coming off of this wire as I move the throttle to see if it moves from 1 volt to 5 volts smoothly. Uh, I want to make sure I do have 5 volts going to the throttle position sensor initially. Of course, I want to make sure I have a good ground, but uh, this is what's most critical. I'm assuming that probably the ground and the voltage coming from the PCM are good, but I want to see how smooth this, uh, this voltage operates as I crack the throttle. To do this test, I'm gonna need the key in the ignition in the run position, but do not start it. That will give signal to the, uh, the throttle position sensor through the ECM. And the way I'm gonna check that, I've got this little kit, and I'll link it below, that will provide me the ability to back probe these connectors without destroying the connector. So I set up for my first check, which is the ground. I've got the probe in the, the gray-red, and I've also got it connected to the ground on the battery, and I should have continuity on the meter, and you can see I've got five ohms continuity. So the ground is testing out. Next test is gonna be the reference voltage, and that's the brown-white wire for the 2002 F-150. And here I've got it back probed again. I'm still on ground, and I've shifted my meter from ohms to voltage, and you can see I've got a perfect five volts as reference from the PCM. Last test is the voltage signal back to the PCM from the sensor. So I've got that set up on gray-white. Still have it on ground, still have it on volts. And here we see that I've got 15.7 millivolts. I cut the sound out of this part of the clip because as soon as I moved the throttle blade, the throttle position sensor started operating properly. Okay, so this uh, throttle position sensor is finicky, but it did start off with millivolts, didn't start off close to one volt, which is where it should start, and it should end about four point, or five volts, 
4.6 isn't bad because the computer looks at the uh, initial signal and uses that as a reference point. So uh, I did get intermittent voltage when I first started doing this test. For some reason, the thing wants to behave properly now, but I knew if the initial test that there is a problem with that throttle position sensor. So now I need to replace it. To pull the throttle position sensor off, I'm gonna to have to take off this component of the EGR system, and there's two eight millimeter nuts, you can see. One on each side of this. I'll take those off, get this out of the way. That gives me access to the, to the Phillips head screws on the throttle position sensor. Got the sensor removed and I've got them side by side to make sure that they directly match. This is the old one, this is the new one. Now to install the new one. Little side note, be cautious and inspect your work as you're getting this done. There's a little 90 right here that actually broke as I was taking this apart and that would cause a vacuum leak and give me a code. So I happen to have an extra one in my storage. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. But uh, again, take a look at these things, especially with these older vehicles. This is 21 years old and 245,000 miles. Now for reassembly, one little tip is I put that, uh, that EGR component back on with the nuts. I use a little tape in the socket to hold it in securely. Throttle position sensor is ele electrically connected and I put the probe on there once again and I want to see what the voltage is. Actually, I really like to keep it as close to one volt, but not quite there as possible. A lot of people say it really doesn't matter with these modern Fords or more modern Fords. But uh, when I used to tune my Mustang, I used to try to keep it at like 0.998 volts to adjust the throttle position sensor to get there after you adjust the throttle blade. And this is really nice. So also I'm gonna articulate the throttle again. And you can see it's just coming up smoothly. It's gonna get up to about 4.6 yeah, volts, which is full throttle. And that's good. So everything is set up now. I just need to make sure that the codes will clear and we'll be good to go. All right, let's talk a little bit about the zip time method. So the purpose of the zip time method is to take up natural slack that's generated in this throttle cable as these, these engines get older. Many vehicles, this will stretch and you'll have to push the throttle cable a little bit before you even get activation of the throttle blade. Now, couple things happen that one of the big problems with that is that you know you don't get immediate throttle response but the second issue is that you won't get full opening of the throttle because you're pushing that uh, likely you're pushing the pedal to the floor and it's not getting to a full articulation of this uh, of this throttle blade and as I showed you when you get full articulation you get about 4.6 volts sent back to the PCM and that tells the PCM you want full throttle so here's what some people do, and I'll show you specifically what I did. Here you see the top of the throttle arm, and you can see that my cable is taut. Uh, you see those washers that I put on there, and then a zip tie on the end of it. So you can see that I've got, what does that look like, maybe a half an inch of play in there. So you want to get rid of this half, of, half an inch of play. You don't want to over tighten it. You want a little bit of slack in there because you don't want the throttle opening to be partially open when you first start the vehicle. You want the... Uh, the throttle blade to be in its normal relaxed state. Now here's an example. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty with a buddy of mine, Mark from Titanic Films by Mark. He sent me this video and you can see some of the slack in his cable that, uh, that needs to be taken up by the zip tie method. So the last thing that needs to be done is to clear that check engine light and what I need to do is go into an OBD device and I'm going to use my uh, SCTX4 and clear it. And I'm also going to clear my Keep Alive memory. So the first thing I want to do is go into, if you're using an SCT, I'm going to go into Vehicle Functions. And then uh, just to show you quickly the code that I had come up with. All right, there it is. It's a P0122 and a P1121. Now, what I want to do is, uh, is clear those. So I'm going to clear diagnostic trouble codes. All right, they're all cleared. And now I want to go into special functions and I want to clear my keep alive memory. Cam reset, which is keep alive memory. I'm going to continue and the cam reset is complete. And that is it. So the check engine light should be off now. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up. Check, the check engine light is out and I'm hoping that it stays out when I'm driving, but I'm sure it will because it definitely was the throttle position sensor. So I'm going to go into my uh, data logging and we're going to see 
how things are running. These data log videos show throttle position absolute values at idle before and after replacement of the TPS. The old throttle position sensor measurement was too low and this is seen when compared to the new sensor. And this is just another indication that the repair is complete. In the description of this video, I'm going to link another short I did that shows how to really thoroughly clear the Keep Alive memory. So make sure you take a look at that. I'm sure this video covered a lot of things that you need to know. Throttle position sensor replacement, the slack in the throttle cable, and clearing the Keep Alive memory. For that reason, please give me that thumbs up. Please comment. I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.